You can also take a look at the body abilities of, of humans and um, if we look at some of the first evidence, for instance, that, that humans began to stand up and walk, uh, footprints have been found which are around 3.7 million years old, uh, suggesting that at least for 3.7 million years old, uh, the body had evolved in such a way that people could walk upright, which may have some evolutionary uh, advantages, so you can uh, pick up things, walk around with them in your hands, and, um, and that will give you an advantage. So there is um, maybe a relation between how the body evolves and how the brains have evolved. Um, you can then make very detailed analysis of how these footsteps are made and you will see that actually around 1.5 million years ago that the way that the steps were made by, uh, by the humans at, at that time were slightly different than the ones that you found 3.7 million years old, a year ago, or those that are 3.7 million years old. So you will see that there is also an evolution in, in body, uh, which may also be related to how the brain functions. Then you can also look at um, the way that uh, humans are able to um, make tools. And of course, the first tools that, uh, that we have found are uh, tools made out of stone. and um, even the way that the hand is shaped in humans has some evolutionary advantages uh, in order to hold stones and uh, hit them towards each other. Uh, and you cannot find, for instance, if you give uh, chimpanzees stones uh, and let them play around with them for many years, they will not be able to make tools in the same way as, as humans are, and simply because there are some advantages in the way that the human hand is shaped, which um, simply makes them supreme in, in doing these by manual tasks and hitting stones and uh, holding one part of a stone and hitting it with another part of, stone, of a stone. So um, that's something that you can see from, from the way that the hand is shaped in, uh, in different primates and also later on in humans. Um, if we look at the artifacts, so that's the, the tools that is actually found uh, from uh, archaeological excavations, um, there is a gradual development in, in the ability to make more and more sophisticated tools throughout the, the evolution. So some of the first tools that have been found are somewhere around 2.5 million year old and these are merely just stones that have been hit, but at least it's, they seem to be more than just coincidences, these stones. They, they seem to have been um, struck in such a way that they actually serve a purpose, so they have sharp, they have sharp edges which can be used as scrapers. Um, even some of these stones may be able to cut through um, quite thick layers of skin. In, uh, so there is an ability to actually gain something by having these tools, for instance, cut through skin of uh, animals and thereby get access to the meat. Um, so some of the first ones, of course, appear, well, of, not of course, but appeared 2,500 million years ago. And then in a period from 2.4 to 1.7 million years ago, there was a practice of making tools called Olduvan, uh, named from a place in Tanzania where they, these first artifacts were found. And it appears that there is a large, um, period here where the same type of tools have been made uh, over and over again. So there hasn't really been in that period of time any involvement in, in how these tools were made. Um, later on, somewhere around 1.5 million years ago, uh, some of the more sophisticated tools uh, were made probably by a species called Homo erectus. And um, these then this type of tool had then been, uh, been present until somewhere around 300,000 years ago where Homo neanderthalis or uh, Homo heidelbergensis began to make what's called the Levallois uh, technique. So it's a very sophisticated way of uh, hitting these stones and thereby it appears that there has been some sort of evolution going on from the Homo erectus to the, the neanderthals and uh, the Homo heidelbergensis. Uh, in, in the evolution uh, of their brains. So, so these require 
a lot of planning, so you have to pick out the right stones in order to make these artifacts. And then, somewhere around 50,000 years ago, um, but also a bit earlier, uh, tools from uh, Homo sapiens have been found which have yet another technological advantage compared to the, to the tools made by the uh, Neanderthals. So in the way that you look at the stone artifacts, you can also get some type of evidence of, of that there is an involvement of the human brain. Then of course, some of the latest, uh, more magnificent examples of, uh, of stone tools are uh, some of the, one of these uh, flint daggers over here on the right, which is found in Denmark. And uh, this is then now a product of um, actually trying to copy uh, completely new technologies. So these have actually been made at a time where um, iron and bronze was uh, available to people. So this is actually copies of um, other technologies. But that's at least the evolution that we have from some of the earliest stone tools that are... So these are stones that you use to, to chop other stones with and then into to these quite magnificent pieces of, of uh, craftsmanship. Um, so there is an evolution, but at least it's taken quite a long time, you know, and. Uh, the appearance of, of other materials than stones haven't appeared until uh, maybe 8,000, 7,000 years ago. So uh, for millions of millions of years, the only material at least used to produce tools have been the, the stones. Um, another important factor in the uh, evolution of the human brain is actually the, um, the availability of food. And... Um, one of the reasons is that the human brain consumes a lot of energy, uh, up to 20 to 25 percent of uh, energy metabolism is used to used by the brain. Um, and if we look at uh, what types of food you then need in order to get so much energy, it appears that uh, meat from vertebrates is a very good source of energy. So, um, <coughs> and. Uh, you can also use, get a lot of energy from fruits and nuts, but in order to, to be able to evolve a brain size as large as the one that we see in, uh, in modern humans, uh, it appears that there is a need to actually be able to, to eat meat uh, at quite an early uh, level or step in the evolutionary, in the evolution. Um, so, if we look at how much, if we look at modern hunters and gatherers, so uh, studies of, uh, of people that uh, don't live in modern society, but at least uh, are still using a type of, of way of living as, uh, as people did earlier, it's, it appears that they consume somewhere around 50% of their uh, energy from, um, from meat sources, whereas uh, it's much less from, from plants. Um, Another important step is, of course, the, the use of fire, which you can use to prepare food and thereby digest it more uh, easily. And uh, some of the first systematic uses of fire appears somewhere around 1 to 1.5 million years ago. Whether it's used to actually prepare food is unknown, but at least it has the ability to actually um, prepare food so it's easier to digest. Uh, others argue that it's the very high consumption of marine animals uh, that uh, has given boosts in the evolution of the human brain. So maybe some places up to 25% of, uh, of the um, amount of food was consumed by marine animals. Um, another important factor is the, um, the demand for uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids that you can get from certain types of, uh, of food and especially from meats. So, um, so that's some of the factors that, that has led to, probably has led to a larger brain. Another important factor, at least some argue it's an important factor, is actually that if you begin to, um, to eat meat, so of course this is sort of a hen and the egg problem, but if you eat meat, um, it digests quicker than uh, a, lot of the a lot of vegetables, which means that um, 
you can actually spend less energy for the guts to uh, to digest the food, which means that the energy can be used for something else than the digestion, and that has then been suggested to be part of the evolution of the brain. Um, so this is a, a plot uh, looking at the size of the um, the guts compared to the body mass, and humans is depicted in green out here, and it lies well below the the line that you find in, in most other animals. So at least it's, it appears that gut size is very small in humans compared to other uh, species. So that could also be a factor. Um, of course, as I mentioned, new technologies such as uh, stone tools made it possible to get access to the meats, uh, but also the way that the social structure of humans have, uh, have appeared uh, seems to give some advantages. So if you divide labor between some who's going out to hunt and uh, hunt animals and some who goes out to gather, for instance, fruits and nuts, so you have some who's actually spending a lot of time uh, trying to find uh, large game animals and others who are trying to find nuts and um, and fruits, um, you will actually see that there is a very large advantage in doing so. So you get a lot of energy by going out and hunt uh, large animals, but on the other side, um, and, and actually the time spent on hunting is not so large, but it's, an, it's a source of energy which is not so uh, reliable. So sometimes uh, the hunt goes wrong and you don't get anything. Um, but if you then at the same time have some body who's going out to gather nuts and fruits, well then these two in combination will actually give you an advantage. So that may also be a, a, an explanation to why the brain has been able to evolve. And um, there is of course evidence that, that hunting has been going on and this is from a Danish uh, excavation of uh, an aurochs um, found with uh, marks from, from um, arrows. But if you look at the, the amount of time spent compared to the amount of uh, energy you get, there is actually a large advantage in, in differentiating labor between different parts of the people. <coughs> Another evolutionary advantage has also been the, the ability to actually kill at a distance. So um, the first spears, they uh, appeared somewhere around 400,000 years ago. And later on, um, so, and that's very recently actually, uh, spear throwers were made. So these are spear throwers where you actually put the end of the spear here and you can actually throw them a lot longer and more precise. So there is an advantage in hunting animals at a distance so you don't get killed as easily. And that may also have been part of the explanation to why there is such a large um, increase in um, other types of evolutionary traits suggesting that a lot took place at least uh, in, in humans somewhere around 45, 30,000 years ago. Um, and then also bow and arrow is of course also an advantage. You can f uh, f shoot even at longer distances. Um, also the human species and at least the Homo sapiens seems to be having a very large advantage in endurance running. Um, so if you compare with all other animal species, I think it's only the horse, which is a better endurance runner than the humans. So that means that there is also some ways of hunting that is possible for humans, which is not possible for other animals. So for instance, uh, some humans are even able to outrun antelopes uh, if you just continue running for, for hours and hours. And uh, humans are able to do so, but a lot of animals are not. So that also gives the ability to get some food sources that you couldn't get either. 